Hello everyone, I'm Colin Royo. I work as a PhD student at the French Natural History Museum in both the Borea Research Unit and the French Biodiversity Data Hub. And this video tutorial is related to the written tutorial available on Galaxy Training, Compute and Analyze Biodiversity Metrics with Pampa Tool Suite. So I'm going to share my screen with you. So uh, first thing to do is simply to go to Galaxy Ecology through the URL uh, ecology.usegalaxy.eu. So I'm going to write it. Uh, make sure you are uh, logged in uh, with the user menu uh, just here. So I'm logged in, that's okay. Um, you are uh, obviously not obliged to be logged in to use Galaxy tools, but uh, you will have some restrictions and your data won't be saved. Uh, so it's better if you create an account and log in for this tutorial. <clears throat> so uh, firstly, the Galaxy interface is composed of four parts. Uh, the Ed banner, where you can log in, uh, find data and uh, workflows and so on. Uh, then on the left, you can find all the tools available on the instance separated in several sections. And you can search keyword as well to find tools quicker like, um, I don't know, if you want to manipulate FASTA files, <clears throat> you'll have all tools containing FASTA in their names or description. So uh, then on, your, on the right, you have your current history containing all your data and every output of every tool you used. And finally, on the center of the screen is where you currently have the welcome page. Uh, but there is also where you get the interfaces of the tools, the, visual, the visualization of the data, etc. So uh, you can uh, expand this part by reducing uh, the history part and the tools part on the sides. Uh, just using these uh, arrows on the down corners. Then uh, to start a training, uh, you just have to click on the little graduation at that is on the top banner to access the training. Then you are to the, on the welcome page of the Galaxy training. You can also uh, open the Galaxy training in another page just by uh, clicking here and opening in another page. But it's uh, really, really handy to do it this way. So I think it's better here. Um, now we can open the ecology section and our um, tutorial is the first one here, uh, compute and analyze biodiversity metrics with Pompa tool suite. And you can open the ends on just um, <clears throat> by clicking uh, on this computer logo. And here it is, you have your training ready. So let's take a quick look into the tutorial's overview. So in this tutorial, we'll learn how to evaluate properly populations and communities, biological states uh, with abundant data through computing and analyzing of biodiversity metrics on Galaxy. We'll use troll survey data uh, that are available on the DATRAS portal carried by the International Council of the Exploration of the, of the Sea. We'll try to assess how those exploited populations of fishes are doing over time in Baltic Sea, Southern Atlantic and Scotland. As we use raw data from the data portal, uh, we'll start by pre-processing to make it fit into the proper format. I avoid um, mistakes on the analysis, then we'll uh, compute metrics 
at population and community levels to analyze it through a common statistical model called generalized linear model, also known as uh, GLM, to respond to a classical ecology question and finally generate interesting visualizations from it. So to do our wonderful analysis, uh, we'll use a workflow called Pampa, which is made of five tools. This workflow is dedicated to ecological analysis, and it is divided depending on the biodiversity level you want to study between community level and population level. So to clarify these terms, you can expand this frame here uh, that contains the definition of uh, population and community. So uh, a population is a group of individuals of the same species that are interacting with each other, whereas a community is a group of, of several species, so several populations interacting with each other. So here on this first figure, you can see the organization of the workflow graphically. So each part of the workflow starts by the computation of metrics, then the modelization part, and finally graphical representations. <clears throat> so uh, the details on each tools are written just here um, on the text just below. So uh, for this video, I uh, will go through the details while uh, we're uh, using it to avoid too many repetition in this uh, recording. Then uh, there are also some technical details about the models we'll use in this tutorial if you expand this frame. So here is technicalities on uh, the statistical uh, models. So uh, I'll explain all this uh, quickly when we go through this part on the tutorial. So let's uh, dig in into the end zone. Uh, we can now start by creating a new history. So um, here, is the step we are currently doing. So you will just have to quit this uh, pop-up part just by clicking anywhere uh, around it on the gray, gray area. Mm -hmm. So I already created a new history myself, but uh, if you want to do so, if you have a history already created, you just have to click on this uh, plus cross just here to create a new history on the, on the top right of the history panel. So then you can rename uh, and just give a name simply to your history, uh, just as you want to name it, uh, no obligations here. It's just uh, for you to find it uh, easily. Um, later so you just have to click on the unnamed history on the on the name of the history really and uh, i'll name it as uh, it is proposed in the example here so i just copy paste this part of the tutorial so i opened it back uh, just um, by clicking on this on the logo and I get back exactly at the same place. So this is a really, really useful tool. So I just copy paste uh, the name in the tutorial and just paste it right here. So I have my wonderful name here. So you can also add uh, tags and annotations to your E3 uh, to find it uh, easily or to add background on your analysis, anything you think uh, can be relevant to add here. Um, now to import your troll survey data into this history, start by uh, retrieving the Zenodo links provided in the training. So you go back to the training, 
Here you have uh, the links provided. So there are other ways you can retrieve the data that are explained just down there. But we'll do the easy way for uh, this video. So uh, you can either click on upload data here on the top of the tool panel, just under the search banner, or you can um, load, click on load your own da data um, that appears on every new histories on Galaxy. Here you have a um, white window that just popped up. So you can click on paste, fetch, fetch data here, and you have an entry that you can um, write in. So just paste your three, the three links in the frame that just appeared and just click start. Here you have your three uh, data frames appearing. So first they are gray as they are waiting to be charged onto Galaxy. Then they'll probably become uh, yellowish. Um, that's that which means uh, it's charging. And hopefully it becomes green as the uploading works as well. So yes, yellowish one here. Uh, if it goes okay, so it's green, but if uh, there is any error, it will become uh, red. Don't panic if uh, anything goes red, it happens a lot. So uh, don't worry, just try, try again maybe, or try another way to upload your data that are explained in the tutorial. Just no panic here. If you want more information on how to um, upload data in other ways, you can go to the tutorial uh, Galaxy 101 for everyone. So this tutorial is, um, so I'll just quit this one. Go back to the welcome uh, page, then introduction to Galaxy analysis topic. And you can find many, many useful tutorials to learn how to use Galaxy. And I advise you to go through these ones if you want to see other ways to upload data and um, other options there is in Galaxy as well. So we're waiting for our data to be downloaded. So uh, it can take a while. If it seems to you that it takes a little, really long time, maybe it's uh, better to refresh your history. And there it is. Um, it was charged, but the interface uh, wasn't following on this one. So just refresh your history uh, works here. So now we have our data uh, properly charged, but we have to check it. Um, maybe checking the headers that must be survey, year, water, area, AFIA ID, species, land class, CPUE number per hour. So uh, we'll also check the other ones. So it's all right. So sorry, I didn't say it, but um, you can just click once on uh, each and you'll have uh, more information on your data sets and an overview of your data set. So um, <clears throat> it's a really handy way to see if everything looks all right. So let's see to the other one. Here we see everything looks okay. Here as well. The format is CSV each time. So it's what we need. And uh, we'll check uh, if there is that separators are commas. So to do so, you'll have to click on the visualize this data. So it's the chart uh, logo you have here. 
And there are many visualization, but um, I like to use the editor to see the separators if it's not point commas, for example. So yeah, our separators are right on this one. <clears throat> so let's check the others. So I just have many visualization here um, to do bar charts and everything. Uh, you can search for the editor by um, writing uh, just the three letters, the three short letters of the word. And then you go on the editor and you see everything looks right here. Also, just the last one. And that's okay. So uh, our data is properly formatted, everything is right. So uh, you can see there is three uh, data frame that has been retrieved from with different methodologies. So we have to keep our analysis of the three data sets separate. So uh, as said in the tutorial, I'll have to go back there, <laughs> sorry. Okay, the ends on. <clears throat> and there we are. So as said in the tutorial, the CPU E per length per area A is the EVOE survey. So it's a French uh, survey on Thousand Atlantic bottom troll from 1997 to 2018. So we'll just add um, tag tags to each file to make sure we don't mix it up. So to add tags, you just have to click on this logo here, then here, and you'll have to write hashtag and the tag you want to add. So it has to be in one uh, word. So here we have Evoe, then the second uh, B, um, file uh, corresponds to uh, SWC IBTS, which is a Scottish survey. So uh, this survey is on uh, Scottish Scotland West Coast uh, bottom troll from 1985 to 2010. And the last C file is the BITS survey. <clears throat> which is an international survey on Baltic sea trolls from 1991 to 2020. So I added an hashtag each time here um, because I want the tags to be uh, spread through the history, but if you don't want to do so, you can just add a tag without an hashtag uh, for this uh, particular um, case, I advise you to do so as we'll have a lot of data sets that are going to be generated. So um, it will be mixed up pretty quickly. So uh, in Galaxy, best is to have your data sets in tabular formats to avoid any problems. So you can convert your data types by clicking on the pencil here at the top right of the data set box. So then you click on convert. And here you can uh, choose a target data type. So there is only tabular. And then you can click on uh, create data set 
And here a new box appears on your history with the tag that has spread with uh, our data frame. So waiting to be launched here as it's gray um, will become yellowish and hopefully green finally. <clears throat> so uh, if you want to convert uh, to, we have to convert the two uh, other data sets. So you can do exactly the same manipulation um, twice, but um, you can also uh, click on the converted, uh, on the new uh, data set that just appeared, click expand it, and uh, click on this uh, round arrow that means to run this job again. And here, if you just click on this icon to select multiple data sets, you can choose your two other data sets by holding your uh, click and then sliding down so that in one execution of your uh, tool, you get the two uh, other converted. So it's quicker uh, and it's another way to run tools on Galaxy. So good thing to learn. So now we just have to wait it to be converted. So here you may be a little concerned about um, the fact that we don't have the tags appearing here, but you just have to refresh the history and it will appear once again on the new converted uh, data. So now uh, the data is properly uploaded onto your history. We have to prepare the data to make sure the workflow goes well. So uh, let's go to the tool we want to use and see in the help section. So um, the tools we'll be using uh, are in the species abundance section. So here we have compute GLM on population and community data. Here um, we have calculate community metrics and present substance table and finally create a plot from GLM data. So as we're going to use uh, first uh, the cal calculation of metrics uh, tools, I'll just go uh, to the calculate community community metrics. So you see it opens in the center of the screen, or you can go as well, um, just opening your training and going up there and also click on the highlighted, on the two names highlighted in blue. So it goes right to the tool you want. So it's uh, also very, and the way to use the training here um, in the pop-up uh, screen. So uh, let's go to the help section to see what kind of input we need. So we see we need a tabular file with observation data. So it must uh, contain at least three columns. A uh, first one named observation units, which may seem a bit mysterious right now, um, but this column actually identifies a unique observation on a particular um, ge geographical and uh, time point. So uh, it's just one uh, event of observation uh, you can get more information on this field by uh, going back to the training. Going to the prepare, prepare the data um, section 
and just expand the, what is the observation unit field and the observation unit nomenclature um, frames. So all you, the information you need are just there. But we won't bother with this uh, column for now. Uh, we'll just use the year and location uh, column. So as you can see, there is a possibility to use either um, these columns. So then we need a species code um, column that's identify the observed species and a number for the abundances of the species. So uh, let's go check the other tool on presence absence table, see if there is any difference. And we see there isn't. So let's start the preparation of the data. So as said in the training, we'll just start to concatenate uh, the data sets tell you to head with a uh, cat. So here we just have to click on this and um, select these three data frames. So you can either on the multiple data sets um, option, you can either just click and slide or click hold your um, control button and click on each of your um, data sets. So then you just execute the tool. So uh, the new data set will normally have the three data frame reunited into one. So it is uh, here confirmed by the three uh, tags that has propagated to the new uh, data frame. So we'll just wait for it to be done. Don't hesitate to take breaks uh, during uh, the computation of tools. It can sometimes uh, take a long time, so don't hesitate to do so. So now our <clears throat> new data frame is ready, so you can have uh, just a preview of it. So it seems to have the same um, format as the previous ones. Just it has many more lines, if you check here, many, many more lines than uh, we had in the first ones. So it's a good thing. And we can see there are the three tags here. So uh, the best is to um, suppress these tags and just add a new one. Sorry, named concatenated. Okay, so this tag is to identify this concatenated and not mix up with the other ones again. So uh, now, as we did a uh, naive concatenation, there is good chance we have the three header lines on the three original data frames uh, in our current concatenated data frame. So uh, we'll have to check it by using the tool count occurrences of each records, as it is said in the tutorial. <clears throat> so just click on the highlighted tool. Select your last one, uh, your last generated um, data set. So it must be already uh, selected here. And then just choose the first column as it's will be uh, detectable in any one, in any column. 
your uh, file is delimited by uh, tabulations as we converted it um, just before. And uh, we want to sort the results with the rarest values first. So let's execute the tool. So now our data frame is created. We'll just have to see if uh, we were right and view the data by clicking on this I logo here. And there is three occurrences of the survey. So the banner of the first, uh, the header of the first column. So we'll have to try and delete it, uh, delete the two other uh, headlines that would um, make mistakes in our analysis if we keep it. So um, we'll use the filter data on any column using simple expression on the concatenate data sets. So the seven one in mine, not the counts, of course, as it is just a report, we won't be using it uh, further in this training. And uh, with the following condition, so C1 means first column, then exclamation, uh, comma, equal sign and the survey. So here we ask for um, filtering any uh, line that has a survey in the first column. So this exclamation point and equal sign means um, different from and survey is our character string. Then we indicate there is one headline to skip as we still want to have one headline in our file. If we don't do so, we won't have uh, other, we won't have a headline at all. So that's not what we wish for. And then we just have to execute this tool. So we can refresh the history to have the concatenate tags that appears. So here it's maybe better to remove it from the count as it isn't a data frame uh, that we'll use in the future. And uh, we'll check it again um, on this last filtered data frame if it works that we have um, really suppressed uh, the the lines we wanted to suppress so here it says it kept 100 percent which is which is kind of weird but we have a lot of lines maybe it went through the check so we'll just Open the count, rerun run the job again with the round arrow. Change for the new data frame, the filtered one, and just do the same exact uh, computation to see if the headers were really suppressed from the data frame. So in the meantime, let's get back to our training. So here we are doing this uh, step to check if um, there is really just one headline. And then we'll just start by formatting the data files. So we'll have to look into our generated filtered data frame. and see if uh, we have material to create year, location, species code, and number columns to uh, use with our current columns that are 
not in the proper format for now. Oh, so our account just finished and we have just one survey in the first column. So the headlines has been removed. Yay. So um, in our new data frame, the year and species column are in the right format, it seems. Uh, so we just need to change the column names into the column names right for the Pompa workflow. For the number column, uh, the abundance seems to be just here, the CPUE number per hour column. So we'll just change the name of the column as well. And the only particular case will be for the location column. We could uh, just use here the area column to do it for of our current data frame, but there is a risk to mix, mix up areas from several different survey as this concatenated um, data frame is composed of several uh, surveys. If they uh, unfortunately use the same names, we don't know that. So uh, we need to create the location field by adding a dash at the end of the survey column, and then we'll merge the survey and the area column together to avoid any mix-up. <clears throat> so at this point of the tutorial, there is another subtlety. Uh, we'll proceed these modifications not only on the concatenated file, so the one I've got under my eyes here, just make the tags appear so it's clearer. So the concatenated file we'll use is this one, and we'll also use uh, the three with um, surveys alone. Um, data frames as well. Uh, we do so because as the community analysis has the possibility of being analyzed separately from each other, uh, this option doesn't exist for the population analysis. So we'll need to keep the data frames separate uh, to avoid analyzing several populations of the same species, but that doesn't interact as one only population would do. So first we'll have to use the tool column regex find and replace. So that is just here on the end zone. So if you haven't understood what I said here, I know I don't have the best English and maybe some sentences are clear. So please just pause the video and uh, go and look into the written tutorial. Uh, maybe it will be clearer for you. Don't hesitate to do so. Um, and we'll get back uh, to the column regex find and replace, replace tool here to just add the dash at the end of uh, the survey um, column. So uh, to do so, we'll use regular expressions, which is a little tricky as well. So I'll try to be, um, to explain it right here, but there is a lot of uh, documentation on regex online, so don't hesitate to go there. So uh, we start when, we get here just to switch to uh, the multiple data sets option as we want to do the computation on several uh, data sets. So first the filter, then we hold our control uh, key and select the three, the three converted um, data frames. So here we have four data frames selected. We'll choose to use the first column as it is the 
a survey column. And then we click on insert check. To, to do a string, a character string manipulation with a regular expression, so also known as a regex. So um, I hope this won't be confusing, um, but um, if you are interested, I just advise you to type cheat sheet regex on your browser and there are many effective documentations you can find this way. I'll try to explain what I'm doing clearly, but um, it's not that easy to, to get how uh, regex work. So I just erase here the in the find uh, entry, I just erase in the replacement entry and come back clean. So if you don't want to bother uh, knowing how uh, regex work, uh, I totally understand. You can just copy and paste uh, what's proposed in the tutorial. You just don't, um, don't have to understand this part. It's not the center of uh, this tutorial, but I think it's still really interesting. So I'll try to explain how I constructed this regular expression. So first, what you have to do is to look into um, the structure of the survey names we have in the column. So luckily we did our count on this structure. So we know a bit on how it is constructed. We know what is everything in this. So we can see our survey names are uh, composed of uppercase letters only for the SWC IBTS there is a dash. So um, you can just uh, ignore this dash. We'll just uh, use this part of the expression to construct our regex because we want the dash to be added at the end of the expression. So it doesn't have to match the whole character string. So uh, we can see that our survey names have a minimum of four characters here with the bits and the IBTS also. So we start by writing what stands for all uppercase letters in regex, which is uppercase A dash uppercase Z. Oh, I write it in the replacement, which is really not the right place to do it, sorry. <laughs> so um, these have to be between square brackets. So here we have the expression uh, standing for any single character that is an uppercase letter. So if I want to indicate there is um, three uh, letters, uppercase letters that I need, uh, I have to put a three in between uh, curly brackets just next uh, to it. So here I have what stands for uh, three uppercase letters uh, characters. Then uh, as we need to select character strings of four or more uppercase letters, I just copy paste the uppercase letter expression, just paste it after the three uh, between curly brackets. <clears throat> and I just write a plus sign after to indicate the prior expression. So this is for one or more characters. So here 
I have the proper regex expression to point out every character string of four or more uppercase letters. So here it will go through this one, this one, and this one. Okay. So we simply want to add a dash after the string. So we have to indicate we want to keep the original character string by putting it between brackets. So this way, I put the all expression between brackets. So it can be called back uh, in the replacement entry with the backslash one expression. So this means first expression between brackets in the find uh, regex entry and just add a dash after it. So it will likely add a dash into our four data sets. So we'll just have to just take a look if everything seems all right. It's the right for um, data sets uh, the, on the first column, that is the survey column, and our regex is good. You can check back in the training if you want to, <clears throat> be sure, and then you can execute it. So here we have the four new um, data frame that appear. So it's a first good point. We'll just wait for it to uh, for the tool to replace uh, to add the dash at every lines. So here we have one up. Ah. Here, everything is right. So we can just check for the few first column if our replacement worked with the, uh, by viewing the data with the I logo here. So here the wonderful dash. Here it is again. Wonderful and finally, Yes, so it worked just fine. Um, now uh, we have to merge the columns uh, survey and area. Just to use simply as said in the tutorial, merge column. So just uh, refresh the history again to um, for the tags to appear. So it's easier to, to see it. Uh, you'll have to select the multiple data set option as well. Again, just click and slide on your four data sets and select the to merge the column one with the column four. So it's really handy to have a preview here as you can see we can just check each time if we are in the right, if you selected the right columns. So that's amazing. So everything seems right here. First column, fourth column, just execute the tool. So again, we have four data frame that pops up in the history. Okay, so refresh again. <laughs> okay, um, everything worked fine. That's wonderful. So if you have any uh, issue at this point, don't worry, everything will be fine. Just try again, maybe uh, check back all your settings and I swear I have a ton of histories and there is more error than a uh, good part. So don't worry if uh, anything goes red, it's normal. 
So uh, now if we check our four newly merged column uh, data frames, we can see there is, there is a ninth column that's formed that is a survey area with our survey names dash the name of the area. So that's wonderful. Same here. Same here. And same here. So good job. So now we just need to change the column names to have our data frames ready. So we we'll use the regex find and replace. So a regex again, I'm really sorry for the one that uh, doesn't like it, but this one is actually easier um, because we don't have uh, any expression. It's just um, character strings, uh, just as simple as it can be. So just click here. You can do the copy paste thing again uh, with the, the tutorial. So I'll do the first one this way, and then I'll explain you how I did this. So again, you select multiple data sets, you click and slide on the four um, data sets you just uh, created, and you insert a first check. So you can copy and paste here oh. each argument. It's OK to do so. But you can also just look into your column names and you'll have to add a check each time. Um, each time you want to change another uh, character string. So with the insert check um, box here, so then you have the species you want to change into species dot code. Then <clears throat> the CPUE underscore number underscore per underscore hour into simply number and finally the survey area into observation uh, into location sorry so here we have our four column that are going to be formed that's amazing. And the four data frames here that we selected. Execute. So uh, after this, uh, we'll ha just have to check if the columns are OK. So we'll have to wait for it. But if you want to uh, use this workflow on uh, other data, or if you just want to pre-process uh, in other ways, this data, there is a million ways to do it. It's just one uh, path. You can do it any way you want. I just added in the tutorial uh, a frame uh, that you can expand with uh, tool names uh, that can be really useful in purposing data. So uh, don't hesitate to, to look into it. There are many tools available in Galaxy to do this pre-processing part that are uh, very efficient. You just have to search for a bit. And when you find the right one, it's. So now our four uh, new data frames are ready. It seems we have year, species code, number, 
and location. So here I looked for the large view, but again, you can go to the preview, year, species code, number, location. Okay, same here. Just all right, and it's okay. So everything seems right. Again, refresh your history for the tags to appear. And finally, we're done with the pre-processing of the data. So I know uh, this part can seem very long and laborious, but uh, we wanted to give you a real life tutorial on this one. So the pre-processing is always a large part of the analysis in science. Very often it is even the longest part uh, of the analysis. And it is very important to get to know your data set before analyzing it, just dig into it uh, to know its biases and flaws, to analyze it with, with care and extract the best and less biased conclusions out of it. So be careful on that uh, to do good science, really. That's the final objective. So now we can do the more scientific part of the tutorial. We can now compute our community and population metrics. And um, we'll start by the Calculate Community Metrics tool. So just by clicking by the highlighted in blue tool here, here it is. And you can choose the concatenate uh, data file as you as we talked uh, already before we can uh, do the community metrics uh, on the concatenated, concatenated sorry concatenated um, file as we can do the analysis uh, by separating the surveys uh, it's okay to do it this way and for the community metrics we want to compute we'll select all because prison substance, species richness, Simpson and Shannon index, also PLU and HEAL uh, indexes are of interest. So we'll just uh, compute them all. So it seems all right. We have our community metrics calculated, just checking if we have everything. So we have the total abundance of the community of at each year and location. We have the species richness, the Simpson, the inverted Simpson index, the Shannon index, the PLU, the Heal index. And we have a new column named observation units. So we'll talk about it just later. Um, here, if you refresh your history, you can see there is the concatenate uh, um, tag that propagated here, which is completely normal. We just add a community tag here to uh, identify our metrics file. So then we can do the same to compute our population metrics. So let's go back to the training, click on the calculate present substance table tool. Then we select multiple data sets and we select our three survey alone um, data sets. So the 21, 20 and 19. Execute. So we just have to wait um, for the metrics to be calculated. Um, and the next step of the workflow is to compute the statistical um, model. So with the compute GLM tool, so let's just have a look into it. 
So we see we need an input matrix file. So the matrix we are going, we are uh, currently creating. So it's it's now done. And then we see we need an unit ops information file. So for now, it's uh, we don't have such a file. So uh, let's see in the help section, what is this file about? So here in the input, we see the population we need the, with the population data. And then a second file, tabular with observation unit data, which contains at least as much columns as use explanatory variables in addition with the observation unit column. So uh, this file is uh, to give information on each observation, such as where it has been made, when, what type of habitat with it, et cetera. It can contain any important information that has been noticed on the field when the observation has been made or how the observation has been made, by whom, et cetera. So as I said before, an observation unit is a single event of observation at one time in one place. So the observation unit field is in the files that we can see here and that we will need in the observation unit um, file as well. So we can check in the population metrics and it is there as well. So, yep, it has been created in each one. We have to have obviously the same format um, of the observation units uh, as it represents actually a key to link the metrics with the observation on, um, on the field and the, all the observation we need actually. So if we, so if we have to build uh, this observation unit file, uh, we need to have it uh, observation unit field that is formatted this way. So with the year of uh, sampling underscore and the location name just next to it. So here in the tutorial, well, we have the nomenclature here uh, that is detailed. So again, if um, it's not clear in my in this video, don't hesitate to pause and uh, go uh, and look into the written tutorial. I just say quite the same thing, but uh, in another way. Uh, so don't hesitate to go there. So um, to format uh, this new file, we'll just uh, have to add the underscore at the end of every year values. So here with the column regex find and replace tool again, uh, we'll do just as we did to add the dash at the end of the um, survey uh, column, just it's an underscore and it's the year column. So we'll do so on the concatenate um, data file to have the most information So it's the 22 here, the data frame we used uh, actually to calculate community metrics that uh, still contains every information we have on the area uh, of observation. So the column we want to modify is actually the year column. So the second one.
So we'll insert a check and in the final regex part, we'll write the expression to point out any number from zero to one. So it's a zero dash nine between square brackets. So it has the same uh, form as uh, for the uppercase letters. Then uh, to indicate we have four of this number. Um, so the format of a year, we have a four between curly brackets. And finally, as we did for the location column, we put this expression between brackets to call it back in the replacement entry with backslash one and just add the underscore uh, after it. So now we can execute this tool. Now, as we did before, we just have to use the merge columns tool on this last uh, data frame that is waiting to be generated. So we'll just have to check if it worked. Yes, it worked. Uh, we see there, there are underscores after each year here. So we just have to say we want to merge column two with the location column nine. Execute. Refresh to get the concatenates, yes, to get the, the tags back and just wait for the columns to be merged. If uh, the columns are merged, uh, we can say we have our observation unit field ready. So let's see, at the end, we have our observation units that are properly formatted. So that's amazing, but to get a proper um, observation unit file, we need to remove the underscores from the year uh, column with approximately the same manipulation we did to add it. So again, go to column regex, find and replace, uh, select the last um, the last data frame we used, column two, insert check. And then again, zero dash nine between square brackets, four times with an underscore just after. And this time we'll have to select only this part to put it between brackets. So only this part are, is between brackets, not the underscore and just call it back with backslash one in the replacement part and the underscore should be gone. So now if you look to your data sets, um, the underscores after uh, each year value has been gone. So now we have to cut the columns uh, that gives uh, details on the species, the length class of the species, the number of it. As uh, our um, observation units file needs 
to have information only on the time and place of something, so not the species, not the observed um, biological uh, individuals there. So um, on the last generated file without the underscores, we'll go back to the training, we'll cut, we'll use the tool uh, cut columns from a table. So selecting the last generated file, then um, ask to keep the column we'll uh, add in the list of fields, delimited by tab, it is still a tabular file, so delimited by tabs and cut by fields. We'll uh, keep our first column, survey, second column, year, third, quarter, fourth, area, and then we'll just keep location and year location. So nine and 10. So here we go. So I do exactly as on the, on the hands-on. So you can just refer it to there if you're a bit lost, don't hesitate to do so. I'll just, I just don't uh, read everything in the tutorial for uh, because it will be a bit boring, I think. So um, yeah, again, don't hesitate to get this video on pause and just relax a bit and see if uh, you missed anything on the tutorial, uh, on the written tutorial. So uh, now we have uh, our uh, file that is properly cut and we have the observation we want. So now we likely have a lot of repeated lines uh, as we suppressed the information on species. So we'll have uh, to suppress the duplicated lines and get unique values in the output. So in order to do so, we'll use, as said in the tutorial, sort the sort data in ascending or descending order um, tool. So these two not only permits to sort your data, so just select the last um, data frame, but you'll see a bit further. So I'll use um, the six column. So you, as you can see, I uh, selected one header line, uh, this one, then the columns to select uh, to do the, the sorting um, according to is the sixth one. So the last one representing the observation unit. So it's supposed to be the core of uh, this uh, file. Then we select uh, ascending order alphabetical sort. So it's not, this part isn't really that important, the most important um, part of using this tool is to check this particular um, option to output unique values. It's the, the outcome we want for our file to uh, shorten it at the maximum. So please check the yes box here and in your case, we keep it this way. So just execute this tool and hopefully there will be less lines in our new um, file. So uh, our data is finally sorted and we have unique lines and we see there is far less lines. So here, uh, 
around uh, 100,000 lines. And in our unique lines, we have just around 600 lines. So we were right on the fact that uh, we had a lot of repeated uh, lines. So we just have now to change the column names with the regex find and replace tool. So I, it's the same as column regex tool, but just hasn't a uh, focus on one column. So one or the other is really has its own uh, use and not always proper to use on each on the same uh, for the same um, manipulation. So it's according to you, according to the expression you're looking for and um, so on. So uh, let's choose our last uh, sorted and unique uh, data table, insert a new check, find the year location and replace it by observation dot unit. So uh, make sure you start by modifying this uh, year location so that the first check is uh, on this um, particular um, expression because if you do it, uh, after the second one, that is location to replace in site. If you do this check first, you'll have no more year location. Of course, it looks for location. You have it here. It will change it into year site and you won't find it um, this way. So just be sure to use it as the first check and then execute, we check we had, yes, we have the right data frame and execute. So if these steps works, we have our observation unit file ready and we can just start to compute some models. So we did a pretty good part here, it was, I hope not too heavy. So let's see. We have site and observation unit. It's perfect. We'll just had a unit obs uh, tag to identify it. I don't put a um, Nash tag here um, because I is the last version of our uh, observation unit uh, file. So it's not necessary to make it spread through. So um, the problem is the tag won't appear here when the data set is uh, not expanded. So uh, it's problematic for the visualization, but when you enter it in, uh, in a tool, uh, you can see um, the tag anyway. So it's where it is the most important to see it, I think. So, okay, uh, let's go back to our training. We'll start by the community analysis, apparently. And that's when I have to uh, talk a bit about generalized linear models. So in these tools, you'll be able to perform either a classical generalized model um, that will test the effects of year sites and or habitat on any metric you choose, or a generalized linear mixed model that will be able to handle pseudo replication of year and or site values um, by taking account of temporal and or spatial sampling replicates. So I hope this is understandable, um, explained this way. 
um, it's really statistical technicality, so it it's normal uh, if it's uh, not uh, if it's hard to to comprehend. So don't worry. Um, so to to achieve uh, to this, we have to set random effects. So that's why it's a model that said mixed. So we have to set random effects either on a year and or uh, on site. So in the data we currently have, there isn't uh, information on the habitat. So we'll test the effects of year and site only in our models. Um, there is often a geographical pseudo replication in this type of sampling. So there is um, often uh, replicates uh, of um, maybe the same individual that will be uh, sampled in uh, two areas. So to take this into account, uh, we'll only set a site as a random effect. So you'll have to know that uh, if you want to put an effect, a random effect on year as well, you won't have uh, effective results uh, of your model. So you can't have uh, all effects in a GLM that uh, is random. So we have to here uh, test year as a fixed effect. So for the community uh, analysis, we use the compute GLM on community data that is here on the first hands-on. So we use our community metrics file, the 23, that is tagged concatenate and community. And then for the unit ops, it's the last we used. Of course, it's just here. We just did it. It was. Um, so then for the response variable from a metrics file, we have the choice between a species. So total abundance, species richness, Simpson index, inverted Simpson index, Shannon index, PLU index, and Hill has the um, species richness is easier to understand because it is um, and to interpret. Um, it is the quantity of different species at a given time and location. So it's just a count uh, and it's located in the fourth column. So that's the one we choose. So to avoid the mix up of the analysis of the different surveys, the analyses are, of course, separated by the survey column. So we'll have one, uh, one analysis per survey, which is located in the first column of the unit ops data frame. So uh, then, as uh, we said before, we set the year and site only. So I suppress the habitat effect here. If you want to add it back, you just have to click on the entry and click back to habitat. So, and to suppress another um, effect, you just have to suppress it this way uh, with the cross, just very easy. And a random effect on site as it is um, in default parameters. <clears throat> so uh, you can specify advanced parameters um, in this uh, tool, but we won't do it uh, this time. You can get more information uh, on these advanced parameters just in the tutorial in the in the frame here. If you expand it, you'll have details on it. So don't hesitate to go through it. Then we just have to click on execute and wait for the models to be ready. So here we have our results. So there is uh, three outputs. 
The first file is the GLM uh, results file, but it's, uh, it often has a weird display. Yes, there is. <laughs> um, it's quite hard to read uh, in Galaxy. So um, there is uh, some um, ways to avoid uh, this type of problems. You can uh, go to the, you can click on the enable uh, the scratchbook visualization on this um, logo here in the top banner. And if you click again on view, it should be right, yes. You can now see it as a well-formatted um, data file. Um, there is another way you can um, see it better. You can just, as it is said on the tutorial, you can use, it's an optional step. You can use transpose rows columns in a tabular file. Just select the GLM results and execute. And it must display nicely for you to look at it uh, better and make it easier to visualize. So both options are uh, good. Just choose the one you prefer. So uh, there are uh, many, many, many details on the produced uh, outputs uh, in the written uh, tutorial. So if you want to know what does each little part of um, the files mean, you can go onto the tutorial, read everything, um, open uh, frames with details and you should uh, know everything about what, what's happening really in these files. So here our transposed, um, just disable the scratch book and make you see our transposed um, data frame. So uh, we have a lot of, um, analysis um, results and uh, indicators that are um, indicated in this uh, results file. So on this first output, uh, GLM uh, results from your community analysis, you can see there has been uh, four models produced, one global, one on bits, one on EVOI, one on SWC, IBTS. So as we asked for, uh, just the first one on global data, uh, we won't look into it as it's not relevant for many reasons we already explained. We can see that um, the distribution set is the Poisson distribution. Uh, it has been set automatically by the tool and uh, it is the proper one for um, using on species ri richness as it is counted data. So the Poisson um, distribution seems just fine. If we look uh, only um, the significant uh, parts of um, of the results, so I know it's not readable this way, don't worry, uh, the, the representation we'll do next will be far more um, efficient to see it, but I want to have a look on uh, in these, um, uh, in these raw uh, results for you to get to know it a bit. So here, if you look into each, um, CINIF uh, lines on the transpose or each CINIF uh, columns on the classical uh, GLM result that isn't readable other anywhere else than the scratchbook. 
So you can see there is always uh, no significant uh, result, no significant. So um, it means that um, the community hasn't really changed uh, over time in these places. So it's always no, 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 no. Until the end of the file. So no significant results, no significant effect of uh, time on uh, the species richness. Uh, so now, uh, usually we're a bit disappointed, but we'll, we forgot something that is a major issue with our data frame. It contains only part of the species found in the samples. All rarest species has been removed from the data frame to get a smaller data set to use in this uh, tutorial and avoid a too long uh, runtime of the tools. So uh, the data set we used isn't proper to make community analysis as it contains data only on part of the community. So here uh, it's for the example, so it's not a big deal. Uh, as we only wanted to show you how to use these tools. And now you know how to do a proper community analysis. So that's pretty good. Uh, just the data isn't uh, fitted to do so. So uh, we can still move on to the second um, output, simple statistics on chosen variables. So uh, this doesn't have many uh, informations really on the on the the model itself, um, but uh, it's more on the interest variable we use, uh, such as uh, we have uh, statistics such as the maximum value of. Uh, species richness we have in our data set. So here we see the maximum is seven, which is very, very low for a survey on troll uh, fishing. So it only confirms this data set isn't suited to make a community analysis. So the third output is actually my favorite. Um, it will give you more keys to evaluate your model and give an indicative rate to your model. So here we have a global rate of 3.5 out of 10, which is pretty bad actually, but uh, we have to see the details on every analysis. So I'm just going to uh, zoom out a bit so we can have it on, a same line. I hope you're still seeing. <clears throat> so if we look on the details on every analysis, because the global rate is uh, quite an indicative uh, rate, so not to be trusted too much, uh, not to make real conclusions from uh, so the best rate we've got is uh, four out of eight uh, on the EVOE um, analysis. So this model has a complete plan here. So uh, each criteria are uh, said here and um, defined just down there. And if you go to the tutorial, um, you'll just have um, details on the analysis rating file here in this um, frame just under read and interpret raw GLMM's output. So if you want to know more about all these criteria, just go there. Okay. So here we have a complete plan, which is very good, but it's not balanced. So bit problematic. It has a few uh, not, not attributed uh, values, which is good, but 
it seems uh, dispersion and dispersion and uniformity of radials isn't okay. So these two uh, criteria, uh, if they are not checked, are pretty bad actually. Uh, it means that uh, the Poisson distribution doesn't fit our data. So it's really not good for the model itself. Uh, then in the last part of this uh, file, we have red flags and advices. So major red flags you have in your analysis. And you can have some advices on how to make your analysis better. So um, for example, uh, you can try to ameliorate your model by trying another distribution law, but as we stated, the data wasn't proper to make a community analysis. So it probably won't help much in our case. So these advices are not to take, um, are not always uh, good, uh, just a little help uh, if you need one, but it's not solving uh, data problems actually. <clears throat> so we can still uh, try to visual, visualize our results, even if these won't probably be trustworthy. Uh, it can be interesting to see what does a plot of a bad model looks like. So let's go back to our tutorial. Just go down there. There are all the details you need on the how to interpret every single part of uh, these three output files. I won't do it here. It's too long. Um, I'm too afraid I will kill you with this. So <laughs> um, I won't do it here, but just look into it. It can be also useful if you want to uh, just uh, interpret um, um, statistical models out of uh, these tools, even if you do it on R and everything, it can be really useful, I think. So let's create the plots with the create a plot from GLM data tool. So the input is the GLM results file. So note, not the transposed one, just be careful about that. Then the metric, the metrics data table used for the GLM. So here uh, is a really handy way to remember which uh, metrics table you used. You can see in the GLM uh, file name, you have the data you used. Um, to perform your analysis. So the 32 is the unit ops. So here, the metrics you'll need, the matrix data is the 23 and 32 for the unit ops table. So really a handy way to make sure you pair the right GLM with the right metrics and unit ops table. So let's execute. and see what it looks like. So here it creates a um, data collection containing four uh, PNG files. So first I'll zoom out because uh, it's in uh, high definition. So here uh, the, we have the representation of the global analysis. So has, as I said, um, it's not relevant to look into these results as it um, gets data from several communities together. So it's not uh, relevant. Let's look at the other ones. So the SWC IBTS, um, isn't really uh, interesting as well. So uh, we see every line is pretty flat. We have very big um, confidence intervals. So uh, to give you more keys, 
Uh, here is in blue uh, representing the species richness variation estimated by the model. Through time, so not much variation from one year to the other. Uh, if any value would be significantly different from the first year of the temporal uh, series, it would appear white. Here, obviously, it doesn't appear white. Then the lower plot represents uh, the mean species richness. for each year without uh, the modelization. And uh, we still observe uh, not much variation. Um, you can get more detailed interpretation of this representation in the return uh, tutorial, but I won't talk more about it here. As we already stated, these analyses are of poor quality. So I'm going to zoom back. Too much, okay. So here we can see we had the same results when before. So we did the same thing. Here uh, under the plots, you can have the detailed um, uh, interpretation I just talked to you about. And we can go back to the population metrics. Maybe we'll get luckier with the population analysis this time. So we can go directly to the compute GLM on um, population data. Same as before, the input, just we have to do the um, modelization on several metrics file as we have several surveys. So here are the three files we need. Here there are bits, SWC, IBTS, and EVO. <clears throat> and then the UNITOPS file is the same as before with the community analysis, of course. So for the uh, response variable from the metrics file, we'll choose, just go back there. Okay. We'll choose the abundance. So the fourth column number of the species. So just as before, we set year and site as explanatory variables and site with a random effect. And same, we won't specify any advanced parameters. So let's execute these models right away. So now we have a lot of outputs, three per um, survey, so nine um, in total. So um, we'll get the same outputs as for the community analysis. So you can go through it and try to uh, analyze this as we just did for the community uh, analysis. Uh, one model is, will be computed for each species individually. So uh, I'll just go through uh, the SWCI BTS analysis in this video tutorial. You can check for the interpretation on the BITS analysis in the written tutorial. And for the EVOI uh, analysis, I'll let you uh, uh, go through it if you want and uh, try to make your own um, interpretation of it. 
So here we have all our uh, analysis. So to know which one is which survey, just refresh your history simply. And here you have all the tags you need to see. So as I find the plots easier to interpret and almost as complete as the raw results, I'll do the interpretation directly on the plot. So I just open the create the plot, a plot from GLM data tool again. Open multiple data sets, of course, for the GMLM results, as well as for the metrics data table. It's in the same order, so it won't um, be a problem at all. And then the UNITOPS entry, just execute. So while I wait uh, for the plots to be produced, I just uh, will take a look at the rating file of the SWC IBTS uh, analysis to see if there is anything I should um, preferably look into. So we can see all single species analysis has the same rate. So four out of eight which is a medium rate. But of course, we have to look into uh, the criteria, and we see there is the same criteria validated or not each time. So we can just do a meta-analysis of all our analyses, uh, our all our single species analysis here. So we can see the sampling plan is never complete or balanced. Uh, residuals aren't uniform. However, dispersion is regular, so it's hard to make conclusion on the distribution, but it doesn't seem to fit very well. Um, let's see how those the represent graphical representation looks like now. It's easier to know. So I'll have to zoom out again. So here we see the representations are the same as the communities. So um, we'll just uh, look into the, if there is any uh, significant um, analysis. So here we see, um, as we don't have um, stars, um, significant stars on the global trends that uh, there isn't a significant uh, effect of time on the um, abundance of uh, Gadus Moria. Same here, we don't have um, significant effects. No significant effect of time. Again, no, no significant effects. And finally here, we have a little star and we have a significant effect for Scrumbus, Scrumbus which is um, simply the Atlantic mackerel. So it shows a significant augmentation according to the model. However, we, when we look further into the graph, we see there is a pretty doubtful augmentation of more than a million percent individuals from 1985 to 2010, which is pretty doubtful, actually. Um, we see there is quite an outstanding augmentation in raw abundances between 2006 and 2010, uh, 2004 and 2007, sorry, uh, before coming back to average values. 
So it seems uh, there, are, there has been some bias introduced or something. Let's take a look to the other ones if we see the same thing. So with the, there is also an event like that with Cadus Moria between 2006 and 2010. Here we don't see such an event. Uh, it seems there is a problem also with this species. And what about the last one? No, we don't see it. So there are uh, three species that seems to have uh, issues and strange uh, raw abundances uh, take off, really. Um, this kind of patterns often appears in biased data sets with a shift in sampling uh, methods, for example, or uh, mistakes while counting the individuals or typing the data. So maybe we'll get better results uh, if we get the data from 2004 to 2010. So you can try it if you want to uh, after this uh, tutorial. Uh, we've already seen tools to do so, so um, you can do it, I'm sure. And I hope uh, the models will be better. So for the three other species, we observed variations are uh, smoother. Here, variations are just seems okay even if the model isn't uh, significant. But we can observe uh, some strange behaviors sometimes in the plots as well. Like here we have a major augmentation, then a major uh, going back. There seems these two points are um, quite, so maybe there was mistakes from nine, 1992 to 1993. We don't know about it. Um, it happens a lot uh, in this kind of long-term surveys. So uh, that's why you have to get to know your data, your data before uh, making any conclusions. So because many shifts can have uh, occurred uh, in material methodology, people working on the project, the way we count, um, many things can happen. So uh, make sure you take uh, all these modifications into account when you uh, do uh, such analysis on a data frame that you don't know a lot about. So here it is, we just did this tutorial. I'm just going to zoom back because uh, you must not see a lot. Yes, we did um, everything we had to do today on an ecological analysis. So um, it has been made on both community and population levels. So now you know how to pre-process abundance data on, on Galaxy, compute ecological metrics, construct a generalized linear mixed model and interpret it. So it's not that easy to get immediately. So I hope I didn't bore you too much with technicalities and that you enjoy this training with me. Don't hesitate to ask, to ask questions on the events chat or by email at this address. Uh, so my professional address, colin.royo at mnhn.fr. So if you have any suggestions also on how to make this training better, do not hesitate to contact me as well. And also don't hesitate to use the feedback um, form that is at the end of the training uh, to give me your feedbacks. Thank you very much for watching.